Hello, I am Navneet Maru from Electrical Engineering Department, Jodhpur Institute of Engineering Technology. I have completed my engineering from Engineering College Bikaner and uh, since last six years I am here in Jeet College and teaching the subjects uh, related to the electronics. Today's topic of our talk is uh, the basic introduction about the power electronics and the power devices and what are the differences between the power electronic devices and the basic uh, electronics devices. Before starting with our talk, I just uh, want to convey some uh, message to you that whenever we are talking about uh, the power and electronics, then these are the two different branches of engineering, power engineering and the electronics engineering, where the uh, power electronics is basically related with the transmission, distribution and generation of the power. and the electronics engineering is basically related with the principle of electronics, principle of semiconductor devices which will be utilized to make the device work. So, here in power electronics subject, what we are doing, we are combining both of the branches. In these, the power engineering is basically started with the power which is being utilized in our homes as 230 volt that is the distributed power in our homes. It is generated on a very uh, high power level as 11 kV or 33 kV. Then what we are doing, we are using the electronics devices with the power level or the electronics devices which will be utilized at the power level. In general, what we have studied earlier is the electronics devices which are generally working on uh, in between the 5 volt to 12 volt or 18 volt. Now, in this subject, in this context, we will study about the electronics devices which will be utilized or which will be uh, make use at some power level rather than the signal level. So, there are two branches of engineering, power engineering and electronics engineering. where power engineering deals with transmission, distribution and the generation of power. And the electronics engineering It deals with the semiconductor devices used. So, this power electronics is very interesting subject. It is very important subject as well as it is having a multidisciplinary subject as we are seeing that for starting with the power electronics, first of all we have the knowledge of electronics or we can say about the electronics devices and for the knowledge of electronics devices, we have the knowledge of semiconductor physics. <coughs> then after, it is also uh, necessary to have as a prerequisite in this course as the circuit theory KVL, KCL, also uh, some control theory and microprocessor and microcontrollers. So, all of these uh, will be combination and the combination of all of these will be made as the power electronics. So, the power electronics is a multidisciplinary subject and it is having all the things all together, we have to deal with all the different uh, types of disciplines in a single subject as power electronics. Power electronics, uh, basically it serves as an interface between the utility and the load. Now, as we are talking about the utility, then utility systems or the utilities are the power supplies or electrical supplies which we are going to uh, give to the different types of circuits or to the different types of loads. So, it will be serve as a, util, uh, a interface between the utility and the load. The load can be of different types. So, depending upon the type of load, 
there will be the different types of uh, electronic system or power electronic system which will be convert the utility system as per the requirement of the load it can be seen uh, from this uh, diagram block diagram here we are using or we are having an electronic power supply or electric power supply as the utility in between there are the power converters and these power converters are serving to the different types of loads now if we are talking about the power converters then these power converters have to serve two purposes one they have to convert the input power or the utility system as per the requirement of the load secondly there are microcontrollers and microprocessors to do the work so in case of converters if we are talking about the converters there are four different types of converters one is the ac to dc converter this is generally said as a rectifier when it is in uncontrolled manner and when it is in controlled manner then it is called as phase controlled converter so as we will discuss in this power electronic course uh, the phase controlled converters the second is dc to ac conversion again if we are applying or we are supplying a electrical power supply in terms of dc and the load which are having or the load which is which we are having is uh, requiring the ac signal to operate so the dc to ac converter will convert the applied input dc into the uh, output as ac so this is dc to ac converter it is generally termed as in inverter then third one is dc to dc converter this dc to dc converter is having a constant uh, dc voltage at the input or at the utility and it will convert that constant dc into the variable dc as per the requirement of the load and these circuits are generally referred as the chopper circuits and lastly the converter which convert the constant ac signal into variable ac signal is called as ac <coughs> to ac converter it is having two types uh, as the ac signal is the output or the uh, signal which is required by the load so this ac signal can have the constant frequency as well as the variable frequency so whenever the output ac signal is having a constant frequency then the converter is named as ac voltage regulator and if it is having a variable output frequency then the circuit is termed as the cyclo converter so these are the various types of converters which will be utilized as uh, the bridge or interface between the utility and the load now all of these converters will convert one form of energy to another form now how and when it this energy will be supplied to the load will be decided by the microprocessor or microcontroller such as the pid controllers and many more controllers are there for controlling the overall supply or uh, power delivered to the load so by this uh, block diagram we have uh, seen that the utility and the load are interconnected by the help of power converters or power electronic devices so the power electronics is defined as the subject that concern the applications of electronic principles into the situations that are rated at power level rather than signal level so as we have uh, learned that electronic devices or the devices which are depending upon the semiconductor physics are initially rated on the signal level we have used the electronics devices up to 12 or 18 volt in uh, the analog electronics now the same devices will be utilized at the power level 
and the level of the power or level of the input voltage is being increased now. So, how this increased power level uh, will be uh, substance uh, the electronic devices or how the electronics devices will substand on that high power level will be depending upon the construction of those electronic devices. So, now we have to make the electronics devices which can substand which can have the capability of handling these high power ratings or these high voltages. So, that will be the task done by the help of the power electronics. <coughs> now, the power in the power electronics the very basic and uh, important invention has been made in 1956 in Bell laboratory. That is the invention of the thyristor. or it is generally termed as SCR. Thyristor is the name given to the family and the SCR is the particular device or particular component of this thyristor family. The name is silicon controlled rectifier. After the invention of thyristor, there is a drastic change made in the power electronics and now all the power electronics equipments are using this SCR. And uh, the work done by the SCR has been increased. Initially, the mercury arc rectifiers and the thyretrons or uh, the magnetron tubes are being utilized for high power applications. Now, the SCR has been replaced all these devices and uh, simultaneously the output has been somewhat efficient now. So, Whenever or after the invention of SCR, there are drastic changes made in the uh, power electronics system and the application of power electronics are all over in the field in a household application or if we are talking about the commercial applications, it is being used as commercially as different uh, types of devices. It is being used at the domestic purpose, it is being used in the communication purpose and there are wide area of the power electronics uh, systems. So, if we see the energy scenario, then in the energy scenario, the 87 percent of the energy is by burning the fossil fuels. We can get the 87 percent of the energy by burning the fossil fuels. 6 percent energy is from the nuclear power systems or nuclear power and the remaining is from the renewables or renewable energy sources. So, as we are seeing in this table, the energy from the renewables is very, very less and there are different reasons of this. First, we are talking about the energies consumed by the fossil fuels. As we all know that fossil fuels are depleting day by day and at max, we can get uh, the coal for 200 years from now. So, there is a question uh, that what will happen or what will the civilization will halt after 200 years? And this is the big questionnaire on us because as today we are utilizing the fossil fuels and if these fossil fuels will be there for our generations. So, that should be kept into mind that fossil fuels are limited. If we reduce the use of fossil fuels for energy generation, then only the generations which are coming can utilize the fossil fuels. So, for doing that either we have to increase the percentage of the nuclear energy or uh, we have to increase the energy generated from the renewables. As we know that there are uh, uh, harm or there are the, uh, it is dangerous to utilize the nuclear energy for uh, generating the energy because the waste which are being produced from the nuclear power plants cannot be resettled or cannot be uh, fully diminished. And we can do what we can do for this or what are the solutions for uh, increasing the uh, energy scenario or uh, changing the energy scenario is to change or to increase the percentage of renewable energy sources. And there are three solutions uh, provided for this. One solution is we have to make use of the energy very, very efficiently.
so that is uh, as as generally say said that that the energy consumed uh, if we save the energy consumed then we can save the energy so if the consumption in b is reduced it means it is the production of the energy so we have to use the energy very efficiently so that the fossil fuels will not be depleted or that can be preserved for the generations second we have to increase the efficiency or conversion efficiency of the inverters we have to increase the conversion efficiency as in renewable energy sources that is the biggest problem that the output or the efficiency of the system is very very low and the initial cost or installation cost of these renewable energy sources are very high so if the conversion efficiency is being improved or increased then also the renewable energy sources or renewable energy uh, power plants can be come into picture so secondly we can uh, if we increase the conversion efficiency then also we can increase or we can uh, improve the energy scenario or energy utilized by the different sources the third point is if we make the devices or if we make the power semiconductor devices in use if we make use of power semiconductor devices and as we know that whenever the power semiconductor devices are turned on there is uh, zero or minimum voltage drop across them and maximum current can flow through these devices so the losses are being reduced if we utilize the power power semiconductor devices and by reducing the losses we can also increase the efficiency of the system here the power conversion cycle is being uh, represented in this cycle we are showing that major part of the generation is being uh, by the coal burning the by burning the coal or the thermal power plant so in a thermal power plant the steam is being generated by burning the coal and that steam is being utilized to rotate the turbine and that will drive the generator now in this process as per uh, the ieee papers the total loss in this process is 65% so whatever we are or whatever the fuel we are making use of it is 65% of that fuel will be lost or it will be uh, to overcome the losses then transmission during transmission and distribution there are different uh, different different types of losses so overall transmission and distribution losses are 17.8% so what power which we are utilizing is 16.7% so as we are seeing that the percentage of utilization of power from a uh, power plant or thermal power plant is very very low 16.7% so whenever we are generating the power from the fossil fuels then there are very much losses and these losses should be overcome then now when we are talking about to increase the conversion efficiency of the devices whether by seeing this scenario whether it is required to reduce or increase the uh, conversion efficiency is a good solution for that or we have to reduce the losses at the front end the front end losses are these 65% losses we are just trying to uh, Uh, convert increasing the conversion efficiency by the help of the power semiconductor devices and uh, we are not seeing this uh, the loss of 65% energy at the front end so whether this loss has to be overcome or uh, we are just going into the power semiconductor devices that is the good solution so if we talking about this then we can conclude that we cannot uh, reduce this loss or this front end loss what we can do if we save the power if suppose uh, we are having a 100 kilowatt of power we are burning a uh, fuel which is which can generate 100 kilowatt of power and it is just producing the power of 15 to 20 kilowatt so it nearly represents that if we waste the 1 kilowatt power here at the utilization end then if we are saving the power 1 kilowatt power here 
if we are saving 1 kilowatt here, it means we are saving around 6 kilowatt here, means we can save the 6 kilowatt uh, energy or we can save the fossil fuels, so that this 6 kilowatt will be burned. So, this is why we are going towards the power semiconductor devices or why we are going towards the power electronics to save this 1 kilowatt, so that this 6 kilowatt of the fossil fuels can be saved. So, that is the major that is the major uh, advantage or major focus on the power semiconductor devices and we will do in this course we will do this thing, we will save the power at the utilization end so that we can save the at the generation end the wastage of the uh, coals or the fossil fuels. So, after discussing all the things which are making power electronics as an important and very interesting subject. We are just now seeing uh, the advantages and disadvantages of using the power electronics devices. Still we have uh, mentioned or we have focused upon the utility of the power electronics in the society or in the power system. Now we will see uh, there are some disadvantages or there are some drawbacks of uh, using the power semiconductor devices are. If we are talking about the advantages, then there are lot of advantages just as high efficiency, high reliability and mass production uh, due to the mass production the cost of a particular device can be reduced and as there is no uh, moving part, so the maintenance of the power electronics devices or power electronic systems are very very less. So, these all are the advantages. Now, come to the drawbacks or the disadvantages. the harmonics. This is the major drawback of the power semiconductor devices as the semiconductor devices are utilized as a switch, they will turn on and off at a very fast speed. Then due to this switching on and off the harmonics can occur in the system and it is very easy to remove the higher order harmonics, but the lower order harmonics can be removed at a very much cost. So, this is the major drawback of the power electronics devices that they generate the harmonics in the input system. Secondly, the power factor, input power factor is also low. The power factor of uh, the power semiconductor devices utilized is low, then these are also having uh, very low overload capacity. these are having very low overload capacity, then whenever the system is being overloaded, then they are not much capable of handling that overload, the system can be crashed or the system can be damaged at a very low overload condition. So, these are the drawbacks of the power electronics devices. Now, from that or up to this point, we have uh, now in touch with the power electronics, we have seen the advantages, disadvantages and why the power electronics is very much important in uh, the current scenario. So, this was all about the interesting to make the subject interesting to make the course interesting and to show the importance of this subject in the electrical stream. Now onwards we will discuss about the different types of semiconductor devices or uh, I, I want to mention it as power semiconductor devices in the detail. So, up to this instant we have uh, just get an idea about the power uh, electronics or what is the utility of the power electronics in current scenario. Now, we will discuss about the power devices or power semiconductor devices in detail. So, the very basic power device is a power diode. As we have learned about the signal diode, which is consisting of a P type material and N type material diffused together to make a P N junction. Now, the properties of P N junction and the behavior of P N junction and the characteristics of P N junction has been discussed earlier. So, now we will see what is the difference between a power diode and a signal diode. 
so to see the uh, uh, difference or to discriminate the signal diode from the power diode we just first draw the diagram for a signal diode a signal diode is consisting of a p type material and n type material where the p type material is having the majority charge carriers as the holes and to neutralize this holes there will be a negative ion as the holes are positive in nature so to neutralize the holes there is a negative ion so we will represent the p type as negative immobile ions and the charge carriers holes similarly the n type is represented by positive immobile ion and the electron now whenever a pn junction is made then due to the gas theory as the gases moves from high density to low density these charge carriers also move from high density to low density and the electron will cross the junction and come into the p region they will just recombine with the holes nearby the junction and due to recombination of electrons and holes these electrons and holes will disappear and only the immobile ions will remain in the structure now due to these immobile ions as the negative ion layer is made nearer to the junction it will now block the electrons which are coming from n region so whenever this negative ion layer will be having such energy or greater energy than the electron then it will repel the electrons coming into the p region that's why the depletion layer will be formed now the width of depletion layer is dependent upon the doping constant or the doping profile of the p type and n type if higher doping level is there then the width of depletion layer will be less because the electrons which are transmitting or which are diffusing from n region it will get a hole near to the junction if p type is heavily doped similarly uh, whenever the doping level is low then the electron has to travel more inside or more penetrate the p region to uh, search out for the hole and due to which the width of depletion layer will be increased so the width of depletion layer is dependent upon the doping constant so this was uh, for the signal diode now what will happen uh, in case of the power diode as the signal diode this depletion layer or this space charge region it is also said as a potential barrier and this width of depletion layer will decide that how much potential is required to make this pn junction as forward bias so in case of power diode what we have to do we have to increase the capability of or this potential barrier of the junction and this will be increased by inserting a drift region in between the p type and n type material so in case of power diode the diagram will be little changed or the construction of the device will be little changed now the device will have a p region and n minus drift layer and a n region now this n minus drift region is responsible for increasing the blocking capability of the diode this drift region is basically for increasing the blocking capability now what will happen by inserting this n minus layer whenever this n minus layer is there n minus is basically representing that the doping level or the doping profile in this region is very low 
normal doping level uh, that is one impurity atom in one million atoms is not followed in this drift region or n minus layer. So that the uh, width of the depletion layer inside this n minus will be increased and as this depletion layer width is increased the potential barrier will be increased and the blocking capability or the reverse uh, voltage handling capability of the device will be increased. So, whenever we will talk about the power devices either power diode, power transistor, power MOSFET all the power devices or power semiconductor devices will have this drift region to increase the blocking capability. So, that is the major change in a signal diode and a power diode that the signal diode does not having the drift region so that its blocking capability is very less and this power diode or the power semiconductor devices are having the drift region inside it so that the power handling or the blocking capability of the device will be improved. So, this is how the power diode is different from a signal diode. Now, after discussing about the construction of the device, we will just see the characteristics of the device and the characteristics will be obtained by applying some potential across the device. So, due to the applied potential or according to the polarity of the applied potential, there are two mode of operation of the device. One is called as forward bias. and the other mode of operation is called as reverse bias. Now, whenever the P type of the diode is connected with the positive of the supply voltage, then the diode is said as working in the forward bias and whenever the P side of the diode is connected with the negative of the applied potential, then the device is said as working in the reverse bias. Now, we are taking the example when the device is connected in forward bias. As we have said this, this is a power diode, so we have applied here A and AC signal and this diode will be forward bias during the positive half cycle of the input signal and it will be reverse bias during the negative half cycle of the input signal. So, whenever the diode is in forward bias or whenever the positive half cycle of the input signal is there, then the diode ideally behaves as a short circuit as we have said that uh, the electrons from the N region have entered into the P region and there is a conducting path formed between uh, the two layers P layer and the N layer. So, these uh, layer will now be uh, depleting or the electrons will cross over the junction and enter into the P region and due to the movement of the electron there is a current in the outermost circuit. So, this is how the device will work in the forward bias. So, if we will see the characteristics of the device in the forward bias, then initially whenever the applied voltage will not be greater than the threshold voltage of the device. Threshold voltage is referred as uh, also as the potential barrier of the depletion layer. So, whenever the input voltage will not be greater than the threshold voltage or the potential barrier, the device will be uh, treated as working in off condition or it is open circuit. So, during that time period there will be no current flowing through the device. So, the current will be 0 up to the threshold voltage VTH. After the threshold voltage, the current will start building up as the device is now forward bias and it will rapidly increases and this type of curve or this type of characteristics will be followed by the device in the forward bias. Now, at the same time whenever the negative half cycle of the input is applied, then this will be represented as the negative voltage 
and during this time period as the device is having a large blocking capability so the device will not conduct but if we continuously increase this source voltage and this voltage will be reaches to the maximum blocking voltage of the device then after that the device will be damaged or there will be a rupture of the device and the uh, current will suddenly increases so this will be represented initially the due to the minority carriers there is very less current flowing in the circuit and whenever the breakdown voltage reach then the current will suddenly increases so this all this characteristics and the circuit is representing the mode of operation of the device or mode of operation of the diode during the forward bias and the reverse bias 